Um, okay, um, Sylvia also is a senior recruiter, so she can answer some questions about um, patients that you're interested in teaching. Um, and then we could go through there. So what we're gonna learn today, um, I do wanna address the global health situation, the coronavirus, um, and what that means for the TEPL courses. You know, I think a lot of people are um, curious about what that's that's going to look like. Things are changing every day, so I'll, I'll introduce that. Um, then I'll do an introduction of terms very quickly. Um, talk about the benefits, why you should take a TEPL course, um, also locations and job placement opportunities. Um, and then at the end, uh, we can do a lot of questions here. So I see a lot of people are filtering in. Um, that's great. Welcome everyone. Um, let me start sharing here. Apologize. Uh, thank you, Brett, for letting me know. Um, so let's get started. And again, uh, for those that are new or just arriving, um, please let me know um, if you have any questions. You can answer them in the, uh, you can ask them in the side and I'll, I'll answer them for you. All right, so um, the TEPL course and coronavirus, the kind of health situation at the moment, obviously, um, you know, for candidates, is that, uh, Moira, are you there? Yes, I'm, yes, I'm here. Okay. Excellent. Just want to make sure that you, you're you available. Um, so TEFL candidate safety is our top priority, obviously. Um, we're following the situation in each country, um, and there have been some delays. Um, I know, like, in China, we've moved that um, to May. Um, it's looking like our May courses will go, uh, go on. Same with uh, Southeast Asia. Um, but just to know, like, you can easily move your uh, date to, you know, we can postpone the date at no cost to you. Um, we can also find a different location that might work for you. So if you're interested in teaching in one location, um, but maybe we're waiting for um, the situation to get better, we could maybe have you take a TEFL course in another location. Um, so if you do have any questions about that, please let me know. Um, we are hoping that most of our TEFL courses are going to resume uh, May and June. So um, I'm happy to, to address those as we go. Um, it's a quick introduction of terms. Um, you might hear TESOL or TEFL or TESOL. Um, and really they're, they're pretty interchangeable, but a, a lot of people get confused. Um, TEFL, which is what we offer, all of our courses are TEFL courses. Um, what that means is you're teaching students in a country where English is not the native language, whether that's in China, Southeast Asia, uh, Europe, English is not the first language. Um, you might see some TESOL courses, and it's really the same, except you're teaching students in a country where English is the native language. Um, so if you were gonna teach here in the United States or Canada or the UK, um, that would be what we call TESOL. Uh, and then the TESOL, the last one here, is teaching English as a second or other language. Um, so it's really a blanket term for both of them. So some of our courses, um, they will be referred to as TESOL and some will be TEFL, um, but really they mean the same thing here. Um, and then I like to get into just like our three options that we have. Um, we have the in-class TEFL courses, um, and I'll speak to each one of those. Uh, we also have our online uh, TEFL courses. So the big difference between the in-class and the online is going to be um, that observed teaching practice, being able to write a lesson plan, uh, deliver it, in front of students um, in each country. And then you get uh, feedback on that. So our instructors will kind of tell you what you did well, uh, what you can improve on, and it's a great way to uh, build confidence in the classroom. Um, the online TEFL courses, um, also very popular. They're very easy to obtain. Um, it's self-paced. So you can take as, as short or as long as you like. Um, the cost is a lot lower because you're not getting that observed teaching practice. Um, 
But one of the negatives might be that, um, you know, you would, you don't get the uh, opportunity to teach uh, in front of the students. So if you're like have some experience um, and you really just need this as a qualification, I would, um, you know, encourage you to take a look at the online TEFL courses. If you're a new teacher or want to get to improve a little bit in your teaching, um, I encourage you to take our in-class TEFL course or um, we have our combined uh, TEFL courses. The combined is a mixture of both. Um, you complete your theor theoretical portion online. And so you just need to have that completed. And then you arrive in the country uh, for 10 days, and then you would still get your observed teaching practice. So it's um, a good cost-effective way to get the most out of, you know, you get your observed teaching practice, um, but and you still get your theory that you do um, online. So let's go to the next one here. Okay, uh, and this is really the most important slide, I think. Um, why take an in-class uh, TEFL course? Um, there's a few reasons why I would suggest taking an in-class TEFL course versus um, just doing the online. And the first one being uh, to build confidence in the classroom. Um, whether you're a new teacher or experienced teacher, um, you can always learn new skills in the classroom. Um, so it's a great opportunity. Um, I did my TEFL course. Uh, I did my TEFL course in Vietnam after I had taught uh, for a year. So I started teaching and then I decided, you know, I want, how do I improve? So I took one of the TEFL courses um, and I learned a lot about um, how to better myself as a teacher. So not only brand new teachers, but also experienced teachers can get a lot out of the in-class TEFL course. Um, resume building would be the next one. And I mentioned this because a lot of schools are looking not only for a TEFL certificate, but one that has that observed teaching practice. Um, so they want to know that you've been in front of the classroom, uh, you've written a lesson plan, um, and that you have that confidence going into uh, your, your first job placement. And, and that gets into our uh, job placement assistance. Every location that we have with a TEFL course we have job placement assistance for uh, every uh, every location. So um, if you are interested in teaching in, a, in one location, it's a great way, um, you know, we can put you and network you with some schools. You can go visit them um, and kind of see where you'd like to teach and, and what is available there. Um, and finally, uh, familiarizing yourself with a new city. Um, so if you've never been to the country, um, Having the four weeks or the two weeks if you do the combined course is a great way to kind of get yourself familiar with a new country. Um, you'll have classmates there that are that you are, um, and you can kind of learn like where the best place you'd like to live and where you would like to, um, where you'd like to work as well. And um, at this point, I'm gonna hand it over to Moira who did her uh, TEFL course in, in China, and she can kind of speak to uh, some of these. Where are you there? Hi, yeah, I am. So hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Um, my name is Moira, and as Sean mentioned earlier, I am a senior recruiter at Teaching Nomad. Um, so for me, uh, I actually was lucky enough um, to have a job in place prior to heading to China. However, um, I did take a combined course where I did my online portion um, as he mentioned, and then I went over to China, to Shanghai for 10 days um, to really get uh, a feel for what it meant to be an international teacher, um, what it felt like to be in front of a classroom, and and uh, really familiarize myself again, too, with the area. Um, I got my start uh, at a training school, so I was working um, uh, with small class sizes, but really the... Um, I felt really kind of uneasy and apprehensive because I'd really never been in front of the classroom before. Um, of course, we've all been in classrooms, but it's a totally different story when you're up in front of a bunch of kids staring at your face and, uh, <laughs> and there's a lot to, to take in. Um, so I found that uh, the, the, you know, the observed teaching practice was really, really beneficial to me. I was able to get in there, um, 
get some get some feedback. Um, for me, I, I'm a particularly fast talker, so that was something that I needed to adjust in order to speak um, more clearly to students who did not have the same level of English that I did. Um, and then in addition to, like Sean said, the uh, being able to famil familiarize myself with the city was so important. Um, I was lucky enough to have a great group of classmates that we all were able to hang out, spend time in the area, find new restaurants and familiarize ourselves with the, the cuisine. Um, and then as well, we were able to figure out which areas were, you know, the most um, attractive for us to live. And for me, that was really important because I already knew where my school was. So I really um, needed to find somewhere that was going to be in close enough proximity that it wouldn't be too much of a commute for me. Um, so that's, you know, really just a, a brief overview of my TEFL course experience. But then um, in addition to, please feel free to ask any questions in the Q&A box. Um, I'm happy to speak to you a little bit more about my uh, experience in China as well, um, just in general to give you an overall view. Um, so I wanted to keep that fairly short and sweet. So I'll turn it back over to you, Sean. All right. Thank you, Maria. I appreciate that. Um, now I'm going to have a poll. Um, here are some of our TEFL course locations. Um, and so if you are an attendee, um, please um, just take a look. And I'm curious to know where you would like to teach. Um, you know, you have the opportunity. Oh, there we go. The votes are coming in. You can vote for more than one. Um, if you're interested in all of them, great. Um, you can kind of see where we have our combined TEFL um, course locations as well. So we have a location in China and Thailand. Um, so not every course is a combined course option. Um, but we have a few here that's in uh, East Asia, which would be uh, China, South Korea. Uh, we also have South America. So we do have a location in Guadalajara, Mexico, Costa Rica, Buenos Aires, Argentina. Um, Europe is, so East Asia and Europe are, are, are kind of leaders here. So we do have Barcelona, Spain, and uh, in Prague, the Czech Republic. And then Southeast Asia, which is quite popular as well. We have uh, Vietnam, Cambodia, Thailand, and Myanmar. Um, so let me show you here. I'll uh, show you those results um, for all the voting. Seems to be uh, pretty close. Looks like East Asia just took the lead. Um, so for this last portion, um, I'm going to make it very like just kind of talk about the requirements and you know some of the pros and cons of each location. Um, I think it's good for you to kind of know where you would fit in um, if you'd be able to teach. Um, and so this would be a great opportunity to ask some questions about a specific location or um, some of the requirements that, that, that they have um, here. So let's get started. Um, we'll talk about East Asia first. Um, so East Asia, which we consider Shanghai, China, which is where our offices are, um, as well as in Denver here in Colorado, um, and also Incheon, South Korea, uh, which is right outside of Seoul. Um, these are going to be the highest um, salaries that we have uh, for someone that is finishing a TEFL course. Um, and great benefit packages. A lot of times they'll give you housing benefits, um, flight reimbursement, um, and you can really save a lot of money here. I think the issue um, that you will run into is that anyone can take a TEFL course, but it's, it's after the TEFL course where you may have um, difficulties um, with some of the requirements. So for example, um, in South Korea and China, you'll need to have a native English speaking passport. Um, so you need to be from the US, the UK, uh, Canada, Australia. Um, you have to be kind of on the list of a country where English is the native language. Um, so a bachelor's degree is required. So um, you can always come and take the course in one of these locations, but to work, if you don't have a bachelor's degree, um, you won't be able to get your work visa in these countries, um, as well as criminal background check. Um, criminal background check is gonna apply to all of these. Um, so you will need to have a clean, clean criminal background. Um, Southeast Asia, if someone does not have a bachelor's degree or they do not come from a native English speaking country, their passport, 
Um, we really like to recommend um, Southeast Asia as um, as another great option. Salaries are really good. Um, they don't have the benefits that they do in China or South Korea, um, but the cost of living is quite low. Uh, rent, you know, you're looking at 300 or 400 US, um, and that would be cheaper if you had a roommate or uh, shared that. Um, no bachelor's degree is required. So as long as that you have a good level of English, um, you'd be able to take the TEFL course and we'd be able to place you in job um, throughout Southeast Asia. Um, you don't have to be a native speaker, um, although you do have to be able to deliver a lesson, have students understand you. Um, and again, you will have to do a, a criminal background uh, check there. So we have multiple locations in Thailand. We have uh, Ho Chi Minh City and Hanoi in Vietnam. Uh, Cambodia is in Phnom Penh and Myanmar is in uh, Yangon. So really popular locations. Um, and, and great teaching destinations. And so I'll get into Latin America. Um, again, you do not need a bachelor's degree and you don't have to be a native speaker. Um, I did see like, what's your motivation? Um, three people said learn a language. If the language is Spanish, um, this is a great um, opportunity. They do have homestays available where you would stay with a family. Um, they would cook you meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, and really a great opportunity uh, to learn Spanish. The issue I think that some people have is the uh, salaries are low, probably the lowest region um, for how much you can make. You certainly can make enough that you can live. The cost of living is quite low, um, but as far as saving money, um, I think that you'd have a difficult time in all three of these locations. Um, Guadalajara, Mexico is quite popular, especially for those um, in the US or, or Canada. So it's very close. Same with Costa Rica, um, Buenos Aires, Argentina, um, also quite popular, a little bit more expensive. You probably uh, make a little bit more as well here. Um, and our last location is uh, Europe. So um, in Europe, we have two great locations. So I saw a few people uh, were interested. Let's see here how many people were interested in Europe. Uh, yeah, so we had seven uh, votes for Europe. So a lot of people are interested in this. Um, there is a difference. So um, Spain, Barcelona, being in the EU, it's going to be difficult to get a work permit if you do not have if you're an EU passport. Um, so a lot of people can go and they can um, work on like an exchange um, or like study as a student and also work there. Um, again, you can take the TEFL course, you know, that four week, a lot of people want to be in Barcelona for four weeks, um, but you'll have difficulty, um, you'll have difficulty uh, staying with the work for it after you're done. Prague is a little bit different. Prague is a great opportunity in Europe because you can get what they call an independent contractor license. So as a English teacher, you are an English or a business, it's a business license. Um, so you're a teacher, you're a business person, um, and so you can stay in Prague for a little bit longer uh, if you're interested. Prague, the cost of living is a little bit lower um, than Spain as well. So it's a great opportunity. Prague's a really popular choice. Um, again, you don't need to be a native speaker, um, but you do have to have a good uh, foundation of English where you can deliver lessons and uh, be understood by the students. Um, and finally, um, this is our combined TEFL course. Um, we do have an option. So we have a full class in Shanghai, China. Um, and we also have uh, the combined course that you do it online and then you take your um, observed teaching practice for 10 days. So we have that option in China um, and Thailand as well, both in Phuket in the south and Chiang Mai in the north. Um, Again, just to kind of recap, you complete your theory portion online, you do all of your, those lessons online, and then you arrive for 10 days in country uh, to observe, to earn your observed teaching practice. Um, it's a good cost-effective option for those that still want to be, um, get that observed teaching practice, but maybe don't have the time or the money to kind of um, stay uh, that long taking the TEFL course. Um, now, Sylvia, are you there? 
Um, Sylvia is one of our yep, placement here. consultants. Oh, yeah, Sylvia, can you talk to us um, about your combined TEFL course experience? Yeah, yeah, of course. So, um, yeah, I did my combined TEFL course uh, all here in the States. So uh, all of that coursework, it was about mm, six weeks or so. Uh, all of that was online and at my own pace as well. Um, so that was really great to be, you know, flexible. I actually did it while traveling around the States. Uh, so that was super easy. And then I came back home to New Hampshire to do my um, in-class practicum. So that was that was really cool because I've never taught before and I don't have any, you know, teaching experience at all. So, um, you know, you can do all the, the online work, but once you really get that hands-on experience is what sort of prepared me for, for my teach abroad experience. Excellent. And Sylvia, where did you teach abroad? I taught in Madrid, Spain. Excellent. Um, great. So, you know, now, uh, thank you, Sylvia. We're going to kind of go okay. through. Um, if anyone has any questions, I did see a few that were posed here. Um, now's a great time to, um, you can either raise your hand. Um, let's see here. Um, one was asked about, um, let's see here. Are there any positions for Arabs? Um, and I will say, yeah, you could you could find um, some teaching work, uh, especially in Southeast Asia or Latin America. Um, it really depends on your level of English. Um, so if you are non native speaker, um, I would we could set up a meeting. I just get your um, see what kind of level of English you have. If you have an IELTS or TOEFL score, um, I'd be happy to um, you know to take that as well. So we can take that into account. So there's certainly opportunities available um, for non-native English speakers, um, as long as you have a good um, handle of English. Let's see, um, Victoria has her hand up. Vic Victoria, are you there? Okay, if you have a question, um, please feel free to, you can just put it in the uh, Q&A. If you have a question about any location or, um, you know, and anything that I can answer for you, I'd be happy to. Um, if you want to ask in private, you can see here um, teacher link at teachingnomad.com. And um, so we do have our webinar discounts available. So if you're interested, please uh, shoot me an email at teacherlink at teachingnomad.com. And um, for our Shanghai courses, both uh, combined and the in class, um, we can offer uh, $150 off those, those courses. Um, any other uh, in-class TEFL course um, would be 100. So that's gonna be South, uh, Southeast Asia, Latin America, or Europe. We can offer a $100 discount on that as well. Um, and then if you're interested in our online TEFL courses, um, we can have $50 off that as well. So um, really, again, if you have more, more information, um, I'm happy to, um, you know, direct you to this uh, website. Um, I did see a question, is job placement guaranteed in China? Thank you, Brett. Um, that is, um, we do guarantee um, job placement in China. So you just have to meet the requirements. Um, you have to have a, a passport from an English speaking country. You have to have your bachelor's degree. Um, and then pass that criminal background check. But um, if you can meet all of those and you come to China, we could guarantee you um, a job place uh, as well. So there's a high demand in, in China. So we are constantly looking for people. And so if you fit those qualifications, um, we'd love to have you come join us. Um, uh, question is, um, are you going to inform us which courses will be postponed due to the virus? Um, Great question, uh, Joseph, thank you. Um, right now, um, I know you might be interested in Myanmar is still going on, um, Southeast Asia, so Vietnam has been postponed uh, to May and June. Um, and we've also postponed the Shanghai course um, till, till May as well. Um, those are gonna be changing every day. So I really want to, um, you know, just have you reach out to me um, and I'm 
in contact with the offices there. Um, I follow all the government regulations. Um, so I can let you know um, if there are um, some issues or if things are going to get postponed. Again, in this time, uh, we're pretty understanding that things are changing. So if you did have a course scheduled, um, we could either postpone it to a later date or we can move it to a location where um, that's not an issue. Um, another question is, uh, how long is the course? All of our courses are going to be four weeks. Um, the combined courses are going to be two weeks. So um, 10 days, so Monday through Friday for two weeks where you can get that um, observed teaching practice. Um, thank you, let's see. Um, if you'd like to teach in Japan, do you have an office in Japan? Uh, great question, at the moment we do not. However, you could come and take the TEFL course in Shanghai, China or um, South Korea. And then Japan is uh, a quite quick flight away. So I'd be happy to, um, you know, give you our resources for teaching in Japan. You could take the TEFL course in one location and then use that certificate that you get um, to get a job in Japan. Um, teaching in Saudi Arabia from India. Um, teaching it since do you have a chance for a teaching online? Uh, yes, you do. Absolutely. Um, especially with your experience. So if you're interested in that, um, please send me an email. I'll uh, follow up with that uh, $50 off. And so you can get started on that online as well. Um, so I have someone from Ghana. So Emmanuel, uh, nice to nice to see you. Um, you could definitely take the TEFL course in uh, South Korea. That's not a problem. Um, but you will have an issue uh, because you do not have a passport from an English speaking country. Um, and unfortunately, Ghana is not on the list. So we do not discriminate. Anyone can take our TEFL courses. Um, but I think the issue will be once you're there and starting to look for a job to, to work legally. I think that's really important. Um, legal work um, and getting that work visa, you'll need to um, have the passport from an English speaking country. There are other locations, Emmanuel. Um, I would direct you to Southeast Asia. Myanmar is a great op opportunity, Cambodia as well. So if you were interested, I'd be happy to uh, I'd be happy to, uh, you know, direct you there. Uh, Annie, um, she asked, what's the duration of the course? Again, it's uh, four weeks for the full online or for the full in-class, two weeks for the combined. Um, and then that online course usually is going to take about two to four weeks, depending on how much time you dedicate uh, towards it. Um, and so I have someone working in, in Dubai. And so can I take this course? Uh, you would have to come into the country, um, wherever you're interested in. You could always return uh, to Dubai with your uh, TEFL certificate as well. Um, Dubai, we don't have any courses there at the moment. Um, but if you'd like to do either combined course um, or in class, um, we can have you come and join us and we'll give you accommodation um, and you know, help you get that observed teaching practice that you can take back to Dubai. Um, excellent. So um, I have Mansoor from Iran. How are you, Mansoor? Um, not a native speaker. He has two degrees teaching English in high school, BA. Um, what places do you recommend that I have the opportunity to get a teaching job? Um, great question, um, especially from Iran and with your experience. Um, I really would take a look at Southeast Asia or Latin America. Um, being from Iran, my first choice to send you and have you look at would be Vietnam, Cambodia, Thailand, or Myanmar. Um, it's a great opportunity, especially with your um, experience. And so I think being there, taking the TEFL course, and then you can kind of look for jobs around, um, you know, a BA in English and a PhD in linguistics um, will get you quite far. Um, unfortunately, in in China and South Korea, you're going to have a problem just with a passport. Um, but that doesn't mean there aren't jobs um, available. The I lived, I took my TEFL course in Vietnam, and uh, lived there for a while. 
made quite a bit of money. There's a good demand for teachers there. Um, and that goes for the whole region. So Mansoor, if you're interested, um, please send me an email, teacherlink at teachingnomad.com, and I'd be happy to send you and speak to you, um, you know, send you some information and speak to you more about it. All right, so Ranthar, um, you have a master's in English and have a TEFL certificate? Excellent. Um, so if you have an online TEFL and you're interested in the in-class, uh, We'd be happy to have you come and just get that observed teaching practice. A combined course might be a good opportunity for you um, as well. Ah, and um, did I like living in Vietnam? I loved it. Um, a great opportunity. Um, English teaching is big business there. Um, they're a growing economy. So they're really looking for, um, you know, to improve their English for work. Um, all the, the kids are now currently starting English at a very young age. Um, so there are always need for teachers there as well. So um, if you are interested in Vietnam, um, I can speak more about my experience and the TEFL course there. Um, I really loved it. I was in Ho Chi Minh City. Um, we have a TEFL course there and also in Hanoi. So great question. Okay, excellent. Um, if there are no other questions, um, I think there are a few coming in. Is the in-class uh, obligatory to get the TEFL qualification? Ronnie, a great question. Um, no, you could do the online TEFL course. Uh, that online TEFL course is self-paced. Takes about two to four weeks to, to get that done. Um, and it is accredited and works globally. So you could definitely do the online course. You just will not get the uh, observed teaching practice. And so just kind of be aware. The online course is great, um, very popular. Um, just some people like if you haven't taught before or you are looking to kind of familiarize yourself with the city, I do recommend the in-class, um, but it's not obligatory. So great question, uh, Rania. All right, um, let's see, so I, I think that We've got all the questions here, unless anyone else has some uh, last minute questions, um, I'd be happy to, uh, to help. I do have some hands raised. Cherry, uh, if you have a question, Emmanuel, I think I answered your question, and Victoria, if you do have a question, um, please feel free to post it. I will be sending this webinar um, out, so if you have any friends or family members that might be interested in a TEFL course, um, I'm going to send this recording to you and please feel free um, to post it. I'll also post it on, um, I'll also post it um, on our Facebook page and our YouTube page um, as well. So thank you everyone. Um, this was a lot of fun and I hope that you got a little bit of information. Um, and if you do have any more questions, please visit our website at teacherlink.teachingnomad.com or email me at teacherlink at teaching nomad. I'm happy to, uh, to get on the phone with you and, and answer any questions you have. Um, so thank you for joining me. Um, this is a lot of fun. I hope everyone is, um, you know, staying healthy. And um, if you are interested, please send me an email. So have a wonderful full day uh, or evening, wherever you are. Uh, thank you so much. Goodbye.